I am Peyton and this is Casey and we are the bookish bees two sisters that like to talk about books almost as much as we like to read them and we're here to talk to you today about a very fun video idea I'm pretty excited about it we are going to check out on Goodreads a website a social media app that's famous for reviews from bookworms such as ourselves mm -hmm. and we're gonna look up our favorite books or some of our favorite books people putting in their one-star reviews and react we've not read these before this is our first time seeing these reviews and we're gonna let you know what they say and what we think let's get into it <laughs> All right, so my first one is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. I've read that. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. This person, one star review, To Kill a Mockingbird says, while the plot was very gripping and well-written, the book didn't actually instruct me on how to kill a mockingbird. I bought this book intending to do away with this obnoxious bird that's always sitting in my backyard and making distracting noises. I had hoped this book would shed some light on how to humanely dispose of the bird, but unfortunately it was this story about a law lawyer and a falsely accused criminal. As I said, the plot is great, but nowhere in the book does it say exactly how to kill a mockingbird. That's a joke, right? Yeah, someone has a sense of humor. Yeah, someone's, yeah, <laughs> hilarious. So the book that I'm really looking up is Little Dorrit by Charles Dickens, and if you ask people who know me, this is my favorite fiction book. I love it so much. Recommended this book to three different people, and so far none of them have been able to finish it, so I guess that's a bad sign. Tell them how long it is. Uh, it's at least 800 pages. I think it would depend on your format. It could be up to a thousand pages, depending on how big your text is. Alright, oh. start with the top. Tell us what it says. I loathe this book. I love Dickens. I've read quite a few of his novels. This monstrosity is plotting pointless and irritating. <laughs> wait, wait, say that again. Ah! This monstrosity is plotting pointless and irritating. And we can't- Plotting? Plotting, as in like it's going nowhere. Uh, like P-L-O-D? I see that now, thank you. Every character is obnoxious. Arthur Clonum and Amy Dort are treasures. A hero and heroine are saccharine and nerve-rendingly irritating. Those who enjoyed it, more power to you. You must have caught something I didn't because this is hands down the worst Dickens novel I've ever read. If I could give it negative stars, I would. Do you feel personally attacked? I do. And honestly, I don't understand this. I don't know what Dickens books this person would like. This is quintessential <laughs> Dickens. I, I, I'd be very curious to know which which ones you liked. The next person also likes Dickens. Ugh. I like Dickens generally, but this was really bad. It's slow, drawn out, and very little happens for a long time. That's because it's Dickens. <laughs> Carry on. Some people will be saying sounds like all Dickens to me, which is partially true, but this is extreme even for Dickens. I should have quit this one when I was a quarter of the way in. Do yourself a favor and skip this book. Ouch. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> I've not read the book. I've only seen the um, BBC miniseries, yeah. which was delightful. Yeah, very close. To it is a bit drawn out. Yeah, but you knew that going in. You picked it up. You saw it was a thousand pages. It's Dickens. Of course it doesn't. But I would say this one's full of mystery. It's full of intrigue. It's full of overcoming your circumstances. I guess they've just read Christmas Carol. Everyone who reads Tale of Two Cities and the Christmas Carol thinks that they're Dickens fans. Right? No, no, no. If you can't get through Bleak House, you're not a real Dickens fan. Wow, you're very pretentious. <laughs> I'm, I'm half joking. I, I know. I'm half serious. My next one is The Guest List by Lucy Foley. I want to I wanna make a trigger, oh, like, but when I say this, before I say, oh yeah, it's recommended, there's trigger warnings within this book. It's very Christie-esque. It is a murder mystery, so... So it currently has 3.86 stars. I guess it's kind of normal rating. Let's see what the what the haters say. All right, first one from the top. I went into this one with such high hopes. The synopsis and the cover were easily everything I could have dreamed of, and yet this was not thrilling at all. I didn't care for any of these characters. The women came across as meek and tired. Their strength is just a mask. 
the men act like they're still teenagers at a house party where anything goes because, quote, boys will be boys. Plot-wise, it was a mess. There are so many POVs, which stands for point of views, and it didn't add the tension or mystery I think I would. it was supposed to. Instead, it was a continuous confirmation that these characters are pretty horrible, and it seems so implausible that so many victims of the same person would show up in the same place. Overall, I love the idea, but the execution didn't work for me. I couldn't connect to any of the characters, and with that, didn't care about their journey. Okay, well, now I feel, I definitely feel worse about the book. Especially, I did mention there were trigger warnings. I mean, I want to know about trigger warnings before I go into a book, so I feel prepared. I didn't feel prepared when I read this book, and it really shocked me. Um, uh, anywho, dang, harsh. Okay, maybe murder mysteries aren't your thing. Because I think it's pretty normal to hate everyone in a murder mystery. You have to think they're capable of murder, so you're kind of like... If they're really great people, they don't, they're not a great suspect. Exactly. I think being honest. And the whole thing of that being not, it's not plausible, well, it's every murder mystery, it's not that plausible. That, it's a, it's a suspension of disbelief. Ooh, so fancy. Here you go. Thank you. Speaking of suspension of disbelief, we do The Secret of Chimneys by Agatha Christie. And I know exactly what they're going to say. This is silly. This would never happen. All right, 3.86 stars. That seems to be the general consensus. I have recommended this to two separate people. One person could not finish it, did not like it. The other person's like, this is the greatest book ever. So apparently it's very polarizing. This is an Agatha Christie mystery from the 1920s. Okay, I was surprised to see that this review has an average rating of almost four stars. I like most Agatha Christie books, but when Christie deviates from her standard mysteries into political and international intrigue type stories, she doesn't do it well. See, also they came to Baghdad, which I actually thought was better than this. The characters are fake and the conspiracies and coincidences are way too fantastic to be believed. At multiple points, I considered putting the book down and not finishing it. I prevailed, but really wish I hadn't wasted my time. I'll continue reading Christie, but will try to avoid these types of books in the future. Props for the names, though. Uh, hold on. Like, time out. Like, mm-hmm. so are these people, whoever, oh, so many people are saying that the characters are fake. Uh-huh. This is the, that's, that's what I'm hearing a lot. Do they know they're reading fiction? <laughs> this was a memoir <laughs> you guys anywho no like I'm not, I'm, I'm not complaining or hating on these people because I'm I'm looking yeah. for one star reviews I just think it's funny I'm here I'm seeing this a lot these, these, these similar ideas concepts yeah. and words they're you y'all, y'all are using the same words and I have a problem with this review because this person didn't know what they were getting into it's not a 19. 40s, 50s, 60s, Agatha Christie. It's not, it's not a Hercule Poirot. This is a 1920s, it's, it was written for young people. It's about young people having fun and oh my goodness, there's a body. It's, <laughs> it's really supposed to be like, like a party. And that's, it feels very 1920s. There's a lot of flappers in it. There's a lot of people just, you know, women riding around in their sports cars. It's not supposed to be taken seriously. I think half of it is supposed to be craziness and none of it makes sense but that's the fun so i i understand but i think they really need to stick to um 1950s miss marbles i think they'll have more fun so my next book is shadow and bone the first one of the Grishaverse book universe by lee bardugo you've heard me talk about it before i love this book i um it's not my favorite but it's one i really do like so i'm eager to see what people think of it especially because of the popularity it's gained from the show. The average stars on Goodreads is 3.97. That's good. Oh my. The first the first review is rather long, so I'm going to skip it, but look at the... Why now the malfunction is the worst love interest ever, an essay. This will be long. Very long. <laughs> also mild spoilers. I got bullet points. No, we're going to skip you. Wow. I'm very passionate about that. Whoa. Whoa. Another long one. People have got feelings about Shadow and Bone. Wow. Okay, so the shortest review I could find. Here it goes. It was their buddy read. It says DNF at 50%. That means they did not finish it halfway through the book. They said, 
there's nothing exactly wrong, wrong in all caps, with this book, but there's also not a lot going to it. There, there's also not a lot going to it. Frankly, I'm bored. I still don't care for any of the characters or the plot, which really sucks. I might pick this up again one day, but right now I don't feel like reading this. I'm sure it's as good as people are telling me, but I'm just not getting into it right now. And I still don't like it 50% of the way through. There's not, then, there's not much hope for it, to be honest. TBH. Um, maybe fantasy isn't your thing. <laughs> World building? I really like Shadow and Bone. I mean, it's a slower read, for sure, for me. But I, yeah, I don't know where you're coming from. Whatever, each their own. Everyone has is entitled to their own opinion. I just feel like they didn't give it a fighting chance. Maybe, yeah. maybe well, here, here's what I'm thinking. Maybe you're not into fantasy. Maybe you are, and I'm I'm just, you know, you, did, you hated it. I don't know. Okay, final one for me. I'm going to do the Scarlet Pimpernel by Baroness Orksy. Dang, you have to be bold to to say to give the Scarlet Pimpernel one stars on a book app. Let's see, that should be interesting. Let's see who these bold people may be. What's the average? 4.05. That's stellar for discerning book readers. Still, 2,000 people don't like it. Wow. What are they saying? As an avid fan of mixtures of romance and action, I was thoroughly disappointed by this book. I found myself drawn to the mystery despite knowing that he was the Scarlet Pimpernel. There was still a sense of intrigue around what each character would do next. Halfway through the book, that interest fell through with a terrible application of a common trope, misunderstandings. The misunderstanding drew on and on and it left me wanting to drop the book. That was something I never knew I'd even think of when I started getting hooked on her writing. The romance, while meant to be the central figure of the story, was what ended up ruining the book. It's <laughs> not even that I hate misunderstandings. I found that trope in many of my favorite romance stories. It's just that this one is, in particular is very obnoxious. When I was reading, I felt like I was smelling a strongly sweet perfume. It smelled good at first, but now that it's been spreading around the room and trying too hard to make a presence, it's getting annoying and suffocating. Ooh. <laughs> it's the greatest love story of our time. <laughs> so with that being said, <laughs> those are some one-star reviews. Everyone is entitled to their opinion. That's fine. Even if they're wrong. <laughs> but that was very interesting. Very interesting. Let us know in the comments what you thought of their reviews and if you felt differently. Yes. All right, we'll see y'all next Friday. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Awesome. I haven't looked ahead, but I've been tempted. So maybe I should just stop there while, while I can still. <laughs> yeah, calm down a bit. Woo. And the end is dull. <laughs> Don't want to hurt any feelings. Is there anyone who just doesn't like the plot? I picked a very long review. This one's shorter. We'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm very passionate about that. Yikes. Ooh, these get political. I might just stick with the funny one. Saccharin? The, our, the hero and heroine are saccharin. You didn't know what you were getting into. Apparently, if you hate it, you really hate it. Either start over your review or pick a different I don't one. Like You're getting this guy. He's you dumb. can pick a different one. You know people thought like this. The thing is, we're reading all these reviews for the first time. We that was funny. Why does it always be so political? Can't you just enjoy a book? <laughs>